My wife just gave birth to our beautiful baby daughter, Lily. Aww. And I want to do something to show my gratitude for bringing this bundle of joy into my life. So my thanks for her carrying a baby for nine agonizing months and enduring all the pains of labor is to build her a chair. I mean, that'll make us even, right? I'm gonna build a rocking chair for our nursery. And this way, I'm not just building something for Katie. I'm also building something for baby Lily to enjoy as well. I've never built a rocking chair and this is gonna be a challenge. So I whipped up this design for my rocking chair and because it is gonna be a challenge, the first thing I'm gonna do is build a scale model on my laser. So I've got that rough design of my rocking chair all figured out and what I'm gonna do is make a scale model of that because the thing with rocking chairs is you have to make sure that it actually rocks correctly, that it's balanced correctly. I'm gonna use my Ohm Tech 130 watt laser to do that. I'm gonna cut out the parts and assemble it with just like some super glue and then I can see if everything is looking good before we even start to build that full-size version. I uh, thought about joining the circus, but uh, took a different path in life. So I still have a lot to learn about running this laser, but I really love the ability to whip up a quick prototype, and I'm guessing this is something I'm gonna be doing a lot more of in the future. Uh, that looks pretty dang good. Like you want it to be kind of balanced a little bit to the rear. I mean, the, the rockers are sitting even. The weight's distributed as it should be. Now what I wanna do, before I actually go carving into all that really nice red oak that I picked up, I wanna make a full scale model to make sure that all my dimensions are gonna fit Katie. I'm using OSB because this is the scrap plywood that I just happen to have laying around. And we'll just do like a rough and dirty full scale model. And I'm gonna cut that on the CNC. We'll slap it all together real quick and see if it works. So the last thing I built for Katie was that red oak king size bed, which we really enjoy. So I'm gonna borrow some of the design elements from that bed and carry that over to this rocking chair. First, I'm building this chair out of red oak, which is by far the most bang for your buck when it comes to hardwood lumber right now. I prefer white oak, but white oak is running about 11 to 12 bucks a board foot in my area compared to 350 a board foot for red oak. I'm also gonna incorporate the vector weight patterns that I carved into the footboard of the bed, but I'll explain more about that here in a bit. I've already had my Avid CNC cutting out all the parts for the rocking chair, and I'm gonna assemble those with domino mortises and glue. Now to clamp these glue ups, I'm gonna glue on these little plywood blocks on either side of the joint. And I can just use a small clamp to pull the joint together without having to worry about the odd clamping angles that I'm dealing with on this piece. I attach these plywood blocks with a little wood glue and some CA glue. And I'm hoping by using plywood clamping blocks, when it comes time to remove those after the glue up, the plywood blocks will break along one of the ply layers instead of tearing out the face grain of the red oak. I really don't know though, because I've never done this before. So we'll just have to see if this is even gonna work. So those have had a chance to dry overnight and now I gotta take off all of these plywood blocks. I'm gonna try using the force of the clamps to pop these blocks right. off, which is a bit like playing Russian roulette. Now I'd tighten the clamps until I could hear it cracking and then just kind of jump back. And sometimes it was super violent, but a couple of times it was kind of a disappointment. Just remember, don't try this at home, folks. Try it at a neighbor's house or in your driveway, or if you want, try it at home because this was more fun than it should have been. As it seems to happen every time I work with red oak, I've got another piece here that has split apart that I'm gonna have to glue back together. So this is why I have such a love-hate relationship working with oak. The finished results of oak furniture are often beautiful, but the lumber is prone to cracking and breaking, as well as chip out any time you run a router over it. Oh, and this is a good time to remind you that I've hidden a little Easter egg somewhere in the remainder of this video. If you're the first one to find it, just leave a comment with the timestamp and what it is, and you'll win a free Johnny Builds t-shirt.
Okay, I've got all those parts out of the clamps and sanded. Now I can add a round over to the two assemblies that make up the seat. The seat is joined by four stretchers and I'm gonna try something new to make the tenons. Speaking of new, the sponsor of today's video is Raid Shadow Legends, who's always coming out with new champions, new tournaments. With over 400 million players in 190 different countries, Raid Shadow Legends is for anyone who enjoys awesome gameplay, killer battles, and amazing graphics. Raid has over 700 champions, each with their own skills and abilities, all with endless customization using artifacts, teams, and strategies. My favorite part of playing Raid are the dungeons. There are 12 imposing dungeons Dungeons, each with their own brutal boss at the end, which is gonna take all your skill to defeat. And if you're looking for a new challenge in Raid Shadow Legends, well, you're in luck. They've just added the fearsome new boss, Akamori the Phantom Shogun. This fearsome new boss is guarding everything you need for your accessory ascension, the new feature that allows you to upgrade your gear to even greater heights. There's also an incredible animated limited series called Raid Call of the Arbiter on the Raid Shadow Legends YouTube channel. With all of this new exciting stuff coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? Use my link down in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. We're talking an epic champion, Knight Errant, and other useful things like energy refills, XP boosters, and skill tones. Once you're in the game and you're crushing your enemies, come find me under username Johnny Builds, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. So just hit that link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Okay, up next I need to make these tenons for the stretchers that are gonna connect the two sides of the chair. Now, obviously this small of a tenon, this is more for alignment and not so much for strength. I'm actually gonna come back and add some dowels for strength. In order to cut these, I'm gonna use something that I've never used before called the Shaper Origin. Now this thing is really cool. It's like a, I don't even know what you would call this. A lot of people call it a handheld CNC. That's not exactly accurate, but it is a router that you move around and then it kind of auto corrects and moves the spindle for you to keep you on the tool path that you create. I've got this thing on my workbench called the uh, Shaper Workstation and it's got this field of tape here and it reads the tape, it knows where it is. It's magic, I assume. So I'm making those tenons on the end of the stretchers with the Shaper Origin and I'm just sort of dipping my toes into the waters of what this thing can do. Having the vertical work holding station means I can cut all sorts of advanced joinery, including dovetails and box joints and the like. And it all works with these downward facing cameras that read that grid of what looks like, I don't know, a set of weird dominoes. This allows the Shaper Origin to know where it is at all times and to place an accurate digital grid over your workpiece to align the cuts. I just drilled pilot holes. I'm gonna do uh, dowels, through dowels, to help strengthen the joints of the stretchers. Now I'm gonna drill pilot holes for where I'm gonna put those threaded inserts in the uh, rocker assembly. And that's how this whole chair is gonna be held together. Probably two quarter 20 bolts, two quarter 20 bolts on either side. That full scale plywood model comes in handy again right here as I use it to align the seat to the rocker. Drilling through the seat into the side of the rocker assembly gives me a pilot hole for adding threaded inserts later on, and this also allows me to screw these pieces together temporarily while I use one side to align the other. And once I have the pilot holes drilled for the other side, it's time to assemble the seat assembly. Now again, I wanna reiterate that the tenons I cut are mainly for alignment. If I was gonna make this again, I would've cut the mortises on the seat parts three quarter inches deep initially, but I kinda of messed this up while I was cutting those on the CNC and only cut them a quarter inch deep. I really didn't think about how I was gonna make the stretchers later on. Now these tenons are still really useful to align and glue up the seat assembly, but that quarter inch mortise and tenon just isn't adding much in the way of strength. So the glue joint itself should be strong enough to hold this chair together, but like I mentioned, I'm gonna add through dowels later on to add a little bit of additional strength to each joint. I don't want my version of Rockabye Baby to end tragically like the actual lullaby does. And why are so many lullabies tragic? I'm not singing some song about an occupied cradle falling out of a tree to my daughter. And I would never buy her a mockingbird that doesn't sing. I mean, what's the return policy on the mockingbird? Did you not ensure the mockingbird could sing before you left the pet store? And don't even get me started on You Are My Sunshine because that song is dark. That's why there's only one lullaby I'll be singing to Lily, and that is... Michael. 
So when Jeff isn't running camera, one of his favorite activities is sanding. So while I'm working on making the files to carve the rocker assemblies, Jeff sanded the seat assembly to get it ready for finish. Just like I did on my red oak bed, I'm using Total Boat Wood Honey to finish the chair, and I have to get the finish on before I move on to the next step where I'm gonna weave in the seat. Also, that wood honey finish on our bed is held up really nicely, and trust me, we've put that bed through its paces. And wood honey is just the easiest finish you'll ever apply since all you have to do is rub it in and wipe it off. I've got a link for Total Boat Wood Honey listed down below and that link will get you a discount every time you shop at TotalBoat.com. While the finish cures, I switched gears to the rocker assembly where I'm gonna carve in a vector wave pattern that I made using VCar Pro. Now again, this matches the design element from the footboard of our bed and I think it's gonna add a really nice detail to what would otherwise be sort of a plain rocking chair. I'm using a 3 8 inch ball nose bit to carve these and I'll make sure I'll have links for all the tools and materials that I use in this project down in the video description in case you want to check those out for yourself. So in the spirit of making my life more difficult than what it has to be on every single project that I do, I'm gonna do something that I've never done before and I'm gonna make the seats using this macrame cord and I'm gonna do a technique called Danish cord weaving. I'm gonna do a little bit modified technique because I couldn't find the nails that I need to do it properly. I'm gonna use staples instead. Essentially, I'm gonna weave a pattern on the seat and the chair back. All right, so any macrame purist or Danish cord purist, not really sure if that's a thing. Any of you watching me do this, please look away. I'm gonna do a bastardized version of these techniques sort of combined. And the good thing is this process was fairly simple once you kind of understand how the pattern works. Also, I'm using staples to secure the cord. I actually looked for the bent nails used to do Danish cord, but I couldn't find any that would have made it in time to complete this project. So I'm just gonna use my pneumatic staple gun. And I think this tool is the difference between weaving this chair in about the six to nine hours it took me versus having days to complete this. And I'm just gonna give you sort of a quick overview of the process. Honestly, if you wanna try this, I think the best thing to do is just watch me weave this. And I think watching me, you'll kind of understand how it all works. So starting with the vertical black cord, I'm spacing these out every inch, stapling the cord to the backside of the stretcher, pulling it around and over the opposite stretcher, stapling it under, and then doubling that back to the other side. And this gives you a grid of two strands of black cord spaced out every inch. Now making that first layer of horizontal black cord this way allows you to keep pulling the spool without having to cut the cord until the very end. But on the next step of wrapping the leftover exposed sections of wood on the stretcher, this does require you to cut the length of string and then wrap it around. Each time you have to wrap it and then pull it all the way through. So this is a bit tedious, but really it only took me about 30, 45 minutes to complete. I picked out these three colors with the light green matching the color of the nursery and then threw in the burnt orange and paint to complement the green and this gives the whole thing sort of an earthy southwest vibe. Weaving in the color cord, I'm pulling a loop through, alternating going over and under each set of black strands and then alternating that pattern on the next row. Using this technique, you can actually make some pretty complicated patterns. And that's definitely something I wanna try, but on another project. For this first go around, I decided just to keep it simple and just rotate through the three colors and evenly sized bands. Hey Jeff, have you seen that new uh, app that everybody's going crazy over? It's called Threads. You can follow me on Threads under the handle Johnny Builds. Same thing on Instagram. And really, Instagram is the best way to see everything that I'm doing behind the scenes and on a daily basis. Okay, I've got the seat finished and I can move on to the chair back. So here's a super quick musical montage paired with an upbeat royalty-free banjo-laden song to keep up with the frantic sped up footage of said montage. Enjoy and feel free to tap your foot and slap your knee a couple times. I know I will.
I'm adding a round over to the leg assemblies using my Rockler routing table that you've seen me use throughout this video. I've got links for all those Rockler products that I use down below. Rockler is a longtime sponsor of my channel and when you support my sponsors, you help support my channel and I always appreciate that. Okay, all that's left is the finishing touches, like adding the threaded inserts to attach the rockler assemblies, adding those dowels to strengthen the stretchers, adding finish to the rockers, and then attaching them to the chair while adding in that final lower stretcher on the bottom. Also, you may have noticed while I was weaving that all the staples were left exposed, as well as the frayed ends of the cord. To cover these up, I made a set of trim boards that hide the unsightly parts of the weaving, but hopefully don't look like too much of an afterthought because this totally was an afterthought. Honestly, I sort of panicked when I realized this was gonna be exposed, but this solution the solution seems to have worked nicely. And with that, the chair is done. We can take it back to the house, set it up in the nursery, and I can't wait to show Katie and see her reaction. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I did not expect that at all. Really? That is amazing oh my gosh shut up this is perfect oh. i cannot believe you did you did this mm -hmm. is it comfy really comfy So we're even, right? I mean, she suffered through nine months of pregnancy and labor, gave me the greatest gift she could ever give me and my daughter Lily, and she gets a chair. I mean, I'm pretty sure this means I won't have to change any more poopy diapers. Thanks for watching. Check out those other videos and playlists and comment this if you watch till the end.